Hey everyone, it's your pal Drew, and I'm going to get right down to random comics for my spare rack. This is uh, Continuity Comics, which was founded by Neil Adams, and a ton of talented people came out of there, like Dick Giordano, Klaus Janssen, Mike Nasser, uh, right, uh, several others, like a lot of names. And uh, so... I'm going to get down to it. They all did various comics. Larry Hama, I think, also was. Uh, they all they did regular comics for Marvel and DC, but uh, Neil Adams decided to uh, do his own comic books, which was cool at first, but it became kind of folly because, uh, like, this issue four, I've never seen it. I have issue one, which is a close-up of armor, and a really cool pose with a thousand reflections on him. It was really, especially for the time. Uh, but doing a whole line of comics, I you know he, I just didn't. I think it was, was it his grasp was exceeding his reach. There, he had Megalith also, and the colors are really cool. And you know he had a lot of assistance at the time, but you know he had final say. Or if somebody would screw up, he would be there to, you know, show them the proper way. Uh, this looks a lot like the monkey creature in Swamp Thing, the Alan Moore version. Uh, beautiful colors. You can tell what's going on. It's very busy, but I see everything clear as a bell. I think Rudy Nebrez was involved with quite a few of these things. Ah, a toy boy. I'll cover everything up except for my fist and my legs. And if you shoot me in the chest or the head, here it is. So I can fuse past. So it's like, oh, it's so ambitious. Instead of one good comic, he decided to spread it out. And it doesn't even, there's armor number one. Really cool. But uh, two and three, I don't know. With, I love this two-page spread. I love it. I love it. That's just really intense. It's it's breathtaking. There's Silver Streak and Armor is his brother, and uh, love these colors and all the. I mean, this is really state of the art. I'm pretty sure that's like a Nebras type panel. Uh, so I mean, I love it, but it came out. You know, it should have said published at whim, like not published monthly or bi monthly. Uh, good stuff. Good stuff. Okay, now I'm going to do, 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 do Liberty Legion. Um, I had this in a thumbnail on a previous episode, but my episode went long, and I kind of forgot to add Liberty Legion. So uh, there's Bucky, and I loved Bucky. I actually wanted to be him when I was little because Robin on Batman, the TV show, it was the most prominent usage of Robin, he was just kind of a, you know, he just kind of stood on the sidelines. He was like this punk kid who basically hung around to either repeat or listen to what Bruce had to say. But Bucky, I, I didn't know about him until 1975 in Invaders Number 1. Uh, and I was like, oh my gosh, Bucky, he's cool. Because he was like an older brother figure. Um, so this is a four-part story. Start off in Invaders Number 6, where the invaders got hypnotized by the Red Skull. This is where the formation of the Liberty Legion. Then they go back to uh, Invader 7, where they... No, no, no. 6, where they fight. Then the next issue here, 2030, uh, is the finale. And uh, it's uh, Don Heck and Vince Coletta, which actually make a really good combination. I don't think they've ever worked together before. And basically, he... I say basically way too much... <laughs> Uh, Bucky decides to break in on a radio uh, broadcast uh, where the Patriot is. He's trying to give some, uh, trying to give some messages about uh, what's going on in Europe and such. Well, the audience is shocked. They think it's just part of the show. Uh, and Patriot gets Bucky, convinces him what's going on. So he's like, how can I on the radio? I love that striped shirt. I always love that look. So it's his job now to say, hey, you know, they've been hypnotized by the Red Skull. And this is brilliant. Um, bring on Red Raven, and you get a dossier that in four panels tells you what he's all about. 
Um, I need a drink of water. Hold on a second. Or Gatorade, excuse me. Uh, still there? Good. And then you can see them in action. And then, there's a story on the Thin Man. He's just like uh, Reed Richards, Elongated Man, Plastic Man. Except that he turns into a like, thin strip. And later, way, later, that would be reused by a John Byrne character called Flat Man. And uh, I just love it. That's a really great page. Uh, 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 no bother with masks, buddy. I mean, I know Red Raven has a secret identity on Earth, but it's like, uh, yeah, well, okay. Talk about the wizard. He has mongoose, mongoose blood in his system, thanks to his dad, and he got these super speed powers, and you just kind of go with it because it's wacky. And it wouldn't be a first issue without Roy Thomas doing a text page, and, uh, I actually kind of liked it because he, he had a memory of like ironclad memory and uh let me see, let me see. I'll get the nah I ain't gonna do it I just wanted to shock you shock me then Miss America lands you get her background she's upside down I love that with the car crashes uh meets wizard they start bickering but later on which becomes romantic bickering Nobody has a mask. Nobody has a mask. It's like, come on, man. And it's not like they're wearing glasses in their alter ego, uh, except this guy. But, you know, he has a full mask, Blue Diamond. I think, yeah, Blue Diamond, they sell, uh, what do they call those? Walnuts, don't they? Or almonds? Blue Diamond. So they all get together. Oh, Jack Frost shows up at the last minute. Uh, let's take them on. Woohoo! Yeah, good luck with that. Um, next. Oh, this will look so much better. That friggin' banner pisses me off. That, not Bruce Banner, that banner. Because X-Men 137 with the Death of the Phoenix had a big friggin' banner like that. So this comic may be worth 25000 to you. Um, Frank Miller cover. I really got tired of this logo. I liked it when it was bigger, like a billboard, but when they added that thickness to it, it just kind of sat there. So we got Bob Sharon on the colors and Bill Mantlo, Sal Buscema, who are also, all three of those are also uh, doing ROM Space Night. And it's perfect marriage. Get that sepia look going on. I wonder who came up with that idea for the, the colors. Maybe Bob Sharon decided to, uh, and it mentioned it to Bill, or vice versa. It's just so dramatic. It's a great opener. Uh, well, <sighs> well, the Hulk, uh, Betty, and Rick are down in the Southwest underground base that <laughs> the Hulk has a setup for his gamma ray. This, it's so crazy. It's like, a, how would he get all that material in there? And he'd have to use a lot of manpower. Even when he was a Hulk and he had the strength, he did. He would never have done that. And because uh, he was kind of simple minded, uh, and he's kind of bum, Rick's kind of bumming out. He's like, uh, yeah, but don't forget uh, that despite what I owe Doctor Bear for saving my neck years back, Rick Jones is a Hulk's pal too. I wouldn't want to see my favorite buddy, whoops, <laughs> or the big green, uh, let me start with, I don't want to see my favorite physicist or my big green buddy hurt. I've never heard you express such concern for the Hulk before. You may be his only mourner when I finally destroy him. So, uh, and for a while in the early 60s, he had that gamma ray gizmo to turn him back and forth. Uh, so it's just... It's just ridiculous. I mean, in a good way. But, uh... So he's saying, like, oh, Hulk can do all this great stuff. And, <sighs> Rick, I understand what you're looking... What you're thinking. You're looking for some part of the Hulk in me that the Hulk to survive the cure for what I'm searching. 
I don't want to be the Hulk anymore, Rick, under any circumstances. So he walks away like a little piece of crap. He's like, he wants to be a groupie to the monster so bad. This gives his background. He was in like a uh, juvenile uh, orphan place, whatever you call it. Uh, he's out and about, runs into our scary dude over the radio. Ah, being attacked. Oh, well, Rick needs help. Charges up. Change. I love the popping of the shoe. So, like, that Gamma Ray thing, they used it to turn him back to Banner. And I don't know how they lured the Hulk back, because he wasn't, he was still pretty, he was pretty dopey this way for, like, eight, ten years. But, oh my gosh, it's loverly. So, Hulk's like, eh, hey, what are you doing, what are you doing? Get out of here. Claps his hands. You know, a lot of cool stuff. Well, instead of, like, making the Hulk dead right away or dying, it changes him. It lowers his, uh, I don't know what you call it, um, his irradiation. Irradiation? That's the right word? Yes, Hulk. Hulk, die. Banner, Banner wants Hulk dead. Die, damn you, monster. Keep, go away and leave me in peace. But Hulk is Banner. Rick said so. And if Hulk dies, I die. And he tells Rick, get out of here. And he sees Rick dying, so changes to the Hulk. One, two, three. So, uh, I mean, at the time, the Hulk was kind of <sighs> spinning his wheels, but it would be another issue or two where the book really got good. It got this long, continuous story, uh, but I won't tell you, because uh, I, I don't have time. Jeez. Plastic Man, beautiful cover by Ramona Frayden and Bob Smith. This was a brief revival. Uh, you can sort of tell also by the 35 cents. That is the worst friggin' price in comics. When it was 30 cents, you can get three for a dollar. But for 35, uh, you need an extra nickel to buy a third comic, which is just insidious. Well, uh, Ramona Frayden, who I had the fortune of meeting in San Diego in 1995, real sweet, real sweet lady. Um, She'd been around. She created Metamorpho. She did quite a few books. Um, Bob Smith's a good inker. I don't know much about him, but Joe Albano is the uh, writer. And Ramona really... Oh, she also did Brenda Star Reporter in the 90s. So They decided to go to some, you know, CD bar and uh, a little coat. <laughs> Plastic Man would turn into anything. So, the guy's got to be shit on him, and Plaz does all the work. He punches those guys without breaking a sweat. So what happens is, Plastic Man sees this guy leaving, and he goes, I'll follow myself. Hey, fat boy, you whacked us pretty good a few minutes ago. <sighs> and I guess you're still not convinced of my fierce fighting abilities, huh? You got that lucky at all. You got lucky, that's all. Uh, stand away as far as you can, bartender, so you don't get splashed with any of the blood from these chumps. And Plaz is changing into everything, including the awning. That's so great! I've always loved that. Um, this guy's walking away with a... Uh, he stole a... What, are you, what was it? Oh, he stole something. Loot, he calls it. Oh, there's a kissing couple in the... In the... Uh, car chasing away and the box turns into the plastic man that panel where he's running is very wally wood that just reminds me so much of wally wood and uh, the art is just fantastic and uh bob smith thinks are good rag man what a great visual but he never took off. I did buy the Brave and the Bold that he was in. Um, they fight. Oh, I mentioned this last time. DC came up with a revival of Return of the New Gods just to spite Jack Kirby because he was coming out with Return of the Gods, which turned out into. Uh, I can't think of the word. Eternals. Um, 
Don Newton did the art, though. That's the one thing worthwhile. The stories are pure crap. I don't think they're canon. I don't like her design at all. I wish she had done more. Like, Big Barda has a very specific kind of uh, uh, clothing, very Kirby-ish. And this is just kind of, it's a little too Dave Cockrell, maybe. And I guess that's Gilgamesh. I don't know. Nor do I care. <laughs> Love that. Plaster to a giant ball and knocks this guy out. That's another face I love. Oh, I love that face. And what happens is, uh, well, at least you were thoughtful enough to wait here and, and tell me our date was off. Well, we waited for you because we didn't have any transportation. Oh, what do you expect me to do? Bend myself into a taxi? Charlie's Big Tipper. I can never resist Big Tippers. Really, really cool stuff. It only lasted like seven or eight issues before it got the uh, DC Implosion 78. Now, here we go, here we go. Um, Claremont and Byrne doing their magic. I don't think this is ever going to be reprinted. I think they skip over this. I was looking at the solicits for upcoming Marvel team-up, and it skips 79. Because of the somebody else read Sonya. And just like King Cole, which happened in a, like issue 112 or so, Marvel had this, this how can I tell it? Like this adorable ignorance when it came to using other properties integrating with Marvel characters. Because, well, they never thought of like a reprint back issue sort of thing. They just threw it in there. So, Schwab the She-Devil. Letter by Tom Orsakowski. So there you go. You got uh, the X-Men team right there. And I can't remember if this is simultaneously with the early issues of X-Men I think so, or if it presaged it, because uh, Claremont and Byrne did a lot of books together. Well, they did a whole bunch of, uh, they did Iron Fist, they did a bunch of Marvel team-ups. So, oh, breathtaking. Terry Austin on the Yanks, which is a lot better than John Byrne on his own Yanks. Robbie says, like, how about the color crapping out there? So tell me, old buddy, how does it feel to be a mild man reporter for a great metropolitan news TV network? See, before Clark, uh, he was a news reporter, and then in the, in the um, 70s, they decided to make him a news reporter, which to me would kind of be a real giveaway with those glasses. Because, I mean, if you're looking at somebody on a big old screen, it's kind of hard to forget their faces. You know, like... You know, on the news, I could tell everybody and the weatherman and everything if I had to point them out of a lineup. Mary Jane shows up. And this is when their relationship is sort of on the rocks. Or it's a very confusing time, so she gives them a smooch with the mistletoe. But he's like, uh, Parker, Charlie Snow, front and center. He tells them what these goings on at the museum. That is a wonderful, wonderful look. Really great stuff. Mary Jane's like, hey, I need some moral support. He's gone. And she walks away. She kind of torqued off. Um, my only question, I did an episode on how superheroes women figured out their identity. She says, oh, Peter, no. It would be too dangerous, and you're not cut out to be a hero. Uh, I had done a few issues a few years later in The Amazing Spider-Man where it debunked the idea. No, no, no. It enforced the idea that Mary Jane knew Pete for a long time. But I kind of let that go. I don't know why. It's just like, you know, it's a very isolated incident. If there were more incidents of that, uh, I would say, oh, well, that was bullshit that they made her discover his identity a long time ago. So there's a sword that seduces her. And then comes Red Sonia. She becomes the uh, host body. Can't imagine what this page would go for. Can't imagine. You know what I like? She has that, you know, uh, the leg decoration, or whatever you call it. And it 
it tucks in her leg a little bit. That's it's really clever. And a lot of people don't think of that. So she's a bit crazed, doesn't know who's friend or foe. She doesn't speak English. He doesn't speak Hyborian. So he's trying to help her and she bashes him in the head. She says, it's another Kulagoth's demons wearing a man's shape. I played right into his hands. So they both fall and they're knocked out. And meanwhile, Kulagoth, he's sending all these slimy creatures up their bodies. Uh, hey, have this cheap-ass shield. Pizzazz. That's right. How about that? At the time, Ditko was saying, oh, not Ditko, Fred Hembeck was saying that he would have loved John Byrne to get on the regular Spider-Man title because it was just a lot of mediocre art. Jeez. A lot of notifications all of a sudden. I love how gross and grimy and almost undead he looks. There we are. And that highlighted, I love the, you know, what do you call the light source on the figure in the middle. That, too, th that's excellent. There's lights all over the place because the cops are showing up, the media is showing up, and he just decides to grab that guy and sock him. <sighs> Don't say I'm gawking here, gawking fool. Get after him before he turns. Ah, can't read. Get after him before he draws more power from the accursed amulet and recover. If you're babbling about this, about the way is read, I think our troubles are over. And she turns back to Mary Jane. And she has no recollection. He has, he decides to take, he wants to take his automatic camera, and he has that amulet. Uh, and it's starting to seduce him. He throws it in the water. And he thinks, funny, thinking all of the battle in a red Sony, all of a sudden, I have this irresistible craving for a flag and a veil. So, really, really cool stuff. Really, really great. And uh, if I tripped over my words too many times, and I have to apologize, you know. It's the old sinuses cause me annoyance. Oh, please, if you like this, click like and subscribe uh, and share with somebody. That would be really great. And leave comments below because YouTube likes that. And if I get more views, um, I'm, I'm getting more and more subscribers. And I totally dig on that. So uh, it doesn't cost you a cent. I don't do any advertising, you might notice. I just go straight to the stories because, uh, you know, why? I ain't going to worry about monetizing my shit and then figure out how to do it with my taxes and stuff. It just ain't worth it. Besides, I, I pretty much ramble straight through. Um, you can get a hold of me on Facebook or Twitter. I do commissions. This is a, a photocopy of a sketch cover for Absolute Carnage. I penciled that. This is an 11 by 17 cover recreation that I did for a client of uh, the Ditko Captain Adam and Blue Beetle. This one, 11 by 17, and it's just crazy. So much fun, though. So much fun. And uh, this is why I pencil and inked the. the uh, those are the two characters, a uh, Shroud and Stingray, that was requested. I'm like, yes, yes, yes. I love both of these characters. You know, they never really got, they never really got their share of fame. You know, it just didn't really come. This is one I penciled. I was attempting on the Iron Man armor to do sort of a Barry Windsor Smith kind of light effect. And uh, I was going total Arthur Adams on that kind of stuff. So, uh, yeah, you can get me on Facebook. You can get me on Twitter. Uh, my homepage, uh, www.drewdracy.com, is also available. And you can contact me that way. And, uh, well, have a good day, everybody. See ya.